10 one here we go last three sections are on circles what is this circle number one it's a definition that's tricky to, to define and I'm gonna say it's all the points that are equal distant or as we say in the business e equi distant from a given point all right so pick a point and it's like pick a radius or however far out you want to go 6 8 12 15 and it's all the points that are equal all right what is the center the point that is equidistant equidistant from all the points what is the radius the radius is that distance whatever it is between the center and any point congruent circles circles that have the same or pardon me that have not the same but equal radiuses so notice how we build we start with the concept all the points that are equidistant from a given point and then we build out from there to what are these shapes first new term probably for you is concentric circles so target uses concentric circles in their logo and these would be circles that are coplanar coplanar and share the same center they are certainly not congruent circles one is bigger okay we also need to define what is outside and inside a circle hence the word interior exterior it's pretty obvious not a lot going on there chord most of you are musicians and you might know what a G chord is well in geometry here's a chord so number one it's a segment that joins two points on the circle not just any two random points but again they have to be on the center so you can't grab let's say this point this point okay diameter really tricky to define but once you have a core down then you can just say it's a special chord that contains the special point known as the center okay it's also known as the largest chord circumference the distance around a circle we know the formula it's 2 pi r and the area of the circle is referred to as the interior finally there are three theorems which we need to go to they involve basically radiuses and chords so the first one if a radius is perpendicular to the chord right so again radius perpendicular to the chord then it also bisects the chord now vice versa if you happen to know whoop, that the radius and the chord are bisected so the chord is bisected by the radius then you know it's also perpendicular so the converse you can flip it around now again that only applies to chords which are not diameters yeah um, but obviously if you drew a diameter like this you could bisect that diameter with that chord um, sorry with that radius and you would still not be perpendicular 
So it only applies to diameters. Finally, perpendicular bisector of a chord goes through the center. I'm going to draw that out. So you got a chord, and you got a perpendicular bisector. Well, that chord, that perpendicular bisector has to go through the center. Not exactly well drawn there, but you get the idea. So again, if you're perpendicular and you're a bisector. Some of your problems are going to be proofs. So let's start up with one here. We have a circle. We know that PR is perpendicular to ST. Prove that PS, this distance, is congruent to this distance. Well, I see two triangles there. And I think my goal is to show that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. And then by CPCTC, I could say this side is congruent to this side. Yeah? All right. How are those two triangles congruent? Well, if this is perpendicular, then that bisects this side is shared. So it looks like I've got side angle side, because all right angles are congruent. So a little refresher on proofs. Again, we're given circle Q. And also that PR is perpendicular to ST. Number two. Uh, we are given now that, or we can conclude that RS is congruent to RT. And that's because of the theorem that we just quoted, which is that if you have a perpendicular bisect, uh, sorry, perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord, right? Number three. Angle uh, P R S is congruent to angle P R T. All right angles for P R is congruent to P R. reflexive and finally that triangle PRS is congruent to triangle PRT. This is a really good review by the way for our final exam going through some ideas concepts more on that later on. Six then by CPCTC PS is congruent to PT. So, very average six-line proof. Hopefully you got the definitions down there as well. Finally, there'll be some math problems like this one. It says find the distance from PQ to the center O. So, how far is it from this line to that dot? Now, please don't think that this is the distance, yeah? That is not. Distance is perpendicular. Well, lo and behold, if we draw those radiuses, we end up creating two triangles. And I know the radius is 13. And the distance from P to Q is 10. So if that whole distance is 10, then that's got to be 5, and that's got to be 5. Because this line, which is going to be perpendicular, has to bisect that side. So this is 13. So now we can see, oh, this is the 5, 12, 13 family. So my answer is 12. Okay, and there'll be a few more proofs 
I'm not going to go through another proof. 